session, uh, we will be sharing this with everybody. So it uh, looks like somebody's recording already. Sorry, Santi, I just hit record. No, good, good, oh, go for I'm, it. I'm sorry. But no, I'm no, sorry. no, no, you're, you're fine. Okay, I'm, I'm, I usually forget to record, so this is good. All right, uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, share my screen now. Okay, so again, uh, welcome to virtual graduations through YouTube Live, Google Meet, and Vimeo. Um, joined by my uh, colleagues over here. So this is the sign-in and the Q&A form. It's, uh, the links are going to be posted in the chat, but if you want to type it in uh, through your browser, it's bit.ly slash DOE grad slash, or not slash DOE grad Q. Uh, again, that's the uh, attendance form. All of this information is in the agenda that's in the chat. So again, I introduce myself. Um, my name is Santi Karasami. Uh, from Project Recess, uh, joined by Reese from Spot and Tracy, also from Project Recess. So what's the point of this, uh, this session right here? We're living in an interesting time. We got 1,800 schools in the DOE. Every one of them is going to be doing some sort of virtual graduation. Uh, there are many ways to do that. So we're just going over, uh, in my opinion, what are some of the easiest ways to conduct a virtual graduation. Uh, so hopefully by the end of this session, uh, you're gonna have a better understanding of how to take pre-recorded content and schedule it to premiere in YouTube or even in Vimeo, or uh, if you wanna test it out using Google Meet, uh, we'll be going over that also. So again, by the end of this session, I'm hoping everyone will have a better understanding of how to conduct a virtual graduation. Okay, so in terms of overview, we're gonna be going over YouTube Live versus Vimeo versus a live stream Google Meet. Um, one of the main differences between these is audience access. And we're gonna be sort of going over these points throughout the session. But essentially, if you want to reach a, a, a wide audience um, where you want it to be as easy as possible, meaning they click on a link and they just watch the thing, um, we're gonna, like, we recommend using YouTube Live because if you use something like Google Meet, um, you'd be using that because you're interested in maybe a more secure uh, viewing experience. What do I mean by that? If you live stream your graduation through Google Meet, the audience, the people watching, need to have a Google domain that's within your school domain, okay? So an issue with that is that many parents don't have a school domain, right? It's just, just their children. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Other family members don't have they typically do not have a school account. So they, in theory, uh, they would not be able to join your Google Meet. Again, we're gonna get more in detail with this, but the main difference between these platforms is audience, um, control of web, web environment, and then the technical process. We're gonna be touching on these things. Okay, uh, suggested process. Um, we suggest creating a virtual graduation organizing team. Uh, and this can consist of you know, multiple people, definitely your school administrators, you know, be it your principal or the AP, subject area teachers, performance teachers, maybe you have a yearbook club. And at the end of the day, we are providing this graduation for our students. So I think it would make sense to, if possible, include students in the planning of this virtual graduation. But again, before you even start, you know, cutting the video and organizing the outline, you want to have a team to put this together because Graduations are, they're, they're a lot of work and nobody should be doing this alone. Um, although I'm sure some people would, will be. But if you can, try to get a, a team together and then we can start, and then you can start your, the planning. Um, questions to discuss uh, when you have this team in place. Do you wanna do live stream or do you wanna pre-record the event or maybe a mixture of both? Uh, live stream is nice when it's done well, but I mean, I think the, the fact of the matter is Again, these are crazy times. Many teachers are stretched thin. Um, it takes a lot of planning and preparation to organize a live stream event. And I'm not sure if people are ready to take on that extra responsibility because it does require a lot of technical know-how and planning and organization. So in this session, we are strongly suggesting people create a pre-recorded graduation ceremony, again, to uh, be scheduled to premiere live at a certain time, uh, whenever your graduation is. Um, so again, there's many platforms out there. You know, uh, you can see them on here. In this session, we're going to be touching on YouTube Live, Meet, and then uh, in Vimeo. 
um, do you want to self-organize your graduation or do you want to hire a production company? It's up to you. I know the DOE put out a list of um, approved vendors to support with virtual graduation. Um, I think many schools are, you know, you can do this on your own. I think the hardest part of this process that we're going to go over is the actual video editing. You know, I'm aware that not everyone um, has the skills to edit video, you know? So if you are looking for support with that, you know, yeah, perhaps reach out to a company like Reese's Media Spot or myself, uh, Project Recess, or any one of those vendors um, on that list that was shared in the Principles Hub or the Principles Weekly. Something else to keep in mind, total duration of event. Uh, I've recommended to a lot of my schools to keep the graduation at about an hour, maybe an hour and a half. It really depends on the amount of students you have. I think a big portion of your graduation video is really going to be the reading of the names, you know, um, uh, when you have like one uh, slide dedicated to the student. So if you have a large school with a graduating class of 400 students, you know, multiply that by four slides per second. Um, that's a long time. So you want to keep that in mind. Um, I was having this conversation with Reese, you know, he's shooting for just under an hour, you know, 45 minutes, half an hour. It's really up to you. Um, but you want to shy away from, you know, the two or three hour uh, graduation videos. Privacy. So definitely you want to have um, the students in your video. You want to make sure that they have signed uh, a DOE photo release form that was handed out at the beginning of the year. Um, hopefully they were able to do that. But I think these are some really interesting questions that uh, Lisa Nielsen, who I believe is on the, on the meeting, she suggested uh, schools ask themselves. So if your school were to host the play, you know, you're gonna have a brochure, you're gonna have student names on there. What privacy precautions would you have in place with that brochure? Because those privacy precautions uh, will translate to your virtual uh, ceremony. Um, if you're, you know, let's say this was um, a crazy time before COVID and you had an in-person live graduation. If you recorded that video, what would you do with it? Would you put it on your website? You know, um, again, a lot of that stuff would translate over to what we're doing now. Uh, ultimately, I would definitely recommend checking with your uh, school administration, your principal regarding, regarding overall media consent. Um, again, I was having a conversation with Reese about privacy. I know with his schools, um, you're, you're doing um, first name only, maybe first name and then the first letter of the last name. Um, feel free to chime in if, uh, if you want to add to that, Reese, but definitely want to focus on uh, privacy here. Uh, copyright. Um, I've been getting a lot of questions from people about music that has, uh, that's associated with copyright or, you know, actual artists, uh, real music, so to speak. Um, I mean, I hate to say it, but the, the safe answer is if you don't have to use uh, music with copyright, don't do it. Not necessarily because you're going to get sued. I don't think a company is going to sue, you know, uh, an elementary school for using you know, whatever, imagine, you know, on their, on their ceremony. But I'm, I'm more concerned about Google's artificial intelligence because when you upload a video to YouTube, you have AI that's automatically scanning your video and looking for copyright content. And if it finds it, it could flag your video and it could prevent it from being um, premiered or, or, or displayed. And that's the last thing you want. The last thing you want is to go through all this work. Uh, you know, you included a copywritten song, you have it premiered at a certain time and it, it doesn't work because it got flagged. So if your students are performing their own rendition of the song or they're singing something, that's fine. But again, if you don't have to, I would strongly um, suggest, urge you to not use copy um, copyright music, just, just to be safe, to make sure that your video is going to be played and going to be seen. Um, as an alternative, there, Santi. please. Uh, so at certain schools, they have traditions where kids make, um, make videos with, with the teachers collaboratively or with, with an outside partner. And those are included in the ceremony. Um, over the years, we've posted those to Vimeo and they've, they've made it with the exception of one video five years ago. Um, but that when, when that uh, takedown notice came from, from Vimeo, it was several months after the graduation ceremony had, had already passed. Um, however, I posted that same video to YouTube in a test uh, this week and it was flagged almost immediately. So I would just say if you, if you do want to 
try to embed something that you've uh, used some copyrighted material on, then uh, Vimeo would be the way to go on that one. And, uh, and then have a backup plan. You know, if you're the video editor, uh, have a backup of that video with, with some um, copyright-free music on it as in an emergency. Okay. Thank you, Reese. Um, just to reiterate that, um, YouTube is very aggressive with their AI flagging copyright material. Um, Vimeo is not as aggressive. So if you do, if it's very important for you to use that music, again, to emphasize what Reese was saying, uh, take a look at, at Vimeo because they also have an option where you can premiere your video and then uh, you'll be able to use that. Um, but in addition, if you are in search of free music, uh, license free, royalty free music, license free music, uh, we added some links on the agenda uh, and it's also here on the slide. Um, if you just Google YouTube, you know, free music library, uh, you will get like hundreds of free songs, instrumentals that you can use in your video. And then there's another site there also. Uh, there's a, there's, there's a, a decent number of sites that give you uh, royalty free music. Okay. All right. So before we get into the technical aspect, uh, here is an example of an event program. Okay. So, you definitely want to have a, uh, a program of how your graduation is going to flow. So here's an example, take it or leave it. But with a lot of my schools, you know, we're beginning with a pre-recording of the Pledge of Allegiance or just having um, the video play or just the audio play. Uh, pomp and circumstance with students' name scrolling. You can move that anywhere within the ceremony. Um, you know, welcome from the principal, uh, school admin opening remarks. You have your speeches. Um, from the principal valedictorian. If you're doing awards, you can have all these things. Um, as you can see, art performances, uh, slideshow, so on and so forth. So the thing to keep in mind is that which each, with each of these different bullet points, um, I'm recommending my schools, each of those things to be their own video, okay? And I, I believe I talk about that in the next slide here. So you wanna delegate responsibility for someone to create each piece of the program. Again, like that's a lot of work to create all of that stuff. It's almost impossible um, with us, you know, social distancing and not being in the same place. So with your graduation team, you want to decide, okay, the arts teachers are responsible for organizing students recording a performance and then sending it to whoever's editing it. Um, the principal's in charge of recording their own uh, welcome and, um, you know, final address. Uh, so on and so forth. You know, the, the person who's doing the yearbook is in charge of getting all the student portraits, uh, putting them in a program and uh, creating that slideshow. So this is definitely going to be a labor of love, uh, but we recommend multiple people taking care of those different pieces. And then at the end, you string them all together. Um, some other tips, if you're using a phone, uh, definitely hold it uh, landscape instead of portrait. Um, cause when you hold it landscape, it'll look better when someone's watching it on a computer, you know, you want to coordinate the look. Do you want, is everyone wearing school gear? Does everyone uh, want to represent school colors? Speak slowly, loudly, clearly, um, natural light. If you're in a, you, you don't want to be backlit, make sure the light is hitting you. And then how will you edit? Um, if, if people have, uh, Apple computers, you have iMovie on there and that's a pretty great uh, video editing platform. There's a million tutorials online on how to edit on iMovie. If you want to take a cloud-based collaborative approach, approach, um, I've heard really great things about WeVideo, uh, which is an online video editor. Okay, sharing right, the video. I'll just drop one more note in there, Santi. Please, um, please, please. You have an option, and we're going to get into it uh, towards the end, to also play your videos uh, as a playlist. So to upload them as small videos and uh, have them played back continuously through a YouTube playlist or a Vimeo playlist. So uh, if you don't want to put them all together into an hour long file, which can be hard to upload all at once. And if there's a problem that you have uh, at the last minute, like you, you've messed up a kid's name, there's a typo somewhere, um, you can replace one of those pieces instead of the whole thing, which can be burdensome to, to upload all at once. Definitely. Um, so we'll get into what the playlist looks like later. Okay, thank you. Um, so yes, we'll get to how to do that with a playlist later. So now we can jump into the technical aspect of this, uh, Google Meet. So in the slide, I do have, you know, slides on how to do this. Um, but I'm just going to do it live. 
um, because I like living on the edge like that. So I'm gonna stop sharing and then I'm gonna reshare and then do this one more time. Um, showing my desktop. Okay. So right now I'm going to show how we can uh, how how we can conduct this through Google Meet. Again, this is not necessarily my um, preferred way to do it because it's it's locked down. Uh, however, I do want to show folks anyway, just in case you're interested in knowing how to live stream uh, via Google Meet. So let me switch to a different profile here. So when you're doing it via Google Meet, you want to make sure that you already have your video uploaded. Okay. So let me copy a, a link. So over without here. further ado. So this is a, a nice uh, Conan O'Brien uh, graduation over here. So you want to have your YouTube video set. So without. Okay. And then now you want to create your Google Meet. So typically, how we've been creating Google Meets is that you'll go to meet.google.com and then you'll create it here. But this is actually a different process. We want to create a live streamed Google Meet. And in order to do that, you don't start at your Meet page. You actually have to start at your Google Calendar. Again, this is to create the live stream. So let's say the graduation is happening on June 24th. So actually, let me make my mouse visible right here. Okay, so you click on the date and then you want to, you want to create a new event. Okay, I'm just gonna go straight to more options. So I'm gonna say uh, example graduation. Right over here, it says add Google Meet video conferencing. So you're going to click on that. Uh, and once you do that, this is a little bit hard to see, but there's a little arrow right here, okay? And it says uh, view conference details. When you click on this little arrow, you're going to see your meeting ID, other information, but at the bottom it says add live stream, okay? So you're going to head and, go ahead and click on add live stream, and that's pretty simple. So now there are two ways to get into this meet you can jump into the actual meet where you can interact and talk, or you can share this live stream link. So if that's the case, you would just copy this link, share it with people within your domain, and they would be able to join. I believe with, um, so with a regular Google Meet call, you have up to 250 participants, but with a live stream, I think you might have up to, uh, it's in the thousands. I don't know how big your school is, but if, if you want to do the live stream, you would uh, you would just copy that and share it with your with your um, with your school environment. So what does that look like? Okay, so if I um, I'm gonna go ahead and join the Google Meet. Okay, so here I ha I, I am in the Meet already, and it says the organizer scheduled this meeting to be streamed. Okay, so I can start streaming if I want to. So once I click on start streaming, there's a disclaimer and now I'm live. So now um, if people have this link, this live stream link, which I'm gonna copy, I'm going to, first I'm gonna open this in an incognito window. So this is if a random person clicks on that live stream link. See, they're prompted to uh, put in their credentials. So again, if you want to reach a wide variety of, of people, this is not necessarily the way to go. But if I switch to a different profile that is within this domain, let me do that right now. Now if I paste this link, see, I can see the, I can click on this to see the stream. So once that's set, how do I play my graduation video? Again, I have my video set in that tab. You want to go down to present now and then you wanna choose a Chrome tab. You wanna choose your tab. Why? Because that's the best way to share your audio. The audio from the video will, play, will actually play through um, the viewer speakers. So you click on Chrome tab. I'm gonna click on the Conan address. I'm gonna hit share. I'm gonna hit play. Further ado, here is Conan O'Brien. And then if I switch to that other account that's doing the live stream, I'll show you what it looks like on their end the viewer speakers. Oh, there, so you there I am. Pro okay. Um, there's a little bit of a lag. So soon this is going to show, there you go. It's show, showing the video. What I, so again, this is great if you want to protect it and only have people who are within your domain. What I'm not a big fan of is that you don't get the video in full screen. You still have your icon here on the side. 
which is um, it's it's not it's not ideal if you want to see the full screen. But that's essentially how you do it in uh, in Google Meet. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, and stop this. Um, before I move on to the YouTube method, are there are there any questions um, about about that process? Okay, and we will also take questions at the end. So that's how you do it via Google Meet. What I'm recommending is people do this through YouTube. All right. So how would we go about uploading a video through YouTube? Okay. So first, you want to have your video edited already. Next, you want to go to YouTube, obviously. Oh. I'm sorry, did somebody have a question? Okay. So when you're at YouTube, um, here at the top right, you're going to see this icon. Oh, sorry, Santi, I, my mute wouldn't turn off. Um, Lisa's just reiterated a question that's been yes. coming up. Um, in Google live stream, people have to be within the domain, don't they? They still for, have to be within the school domain. For the YouTube live stream? No, oh, for the Google Meet. For the Google Meet live stream, yes. The viewers have to be within the domain. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, again, like, and that, so parents typically don't have that account. Um, now they could probably log in with, uh, you know, with their child's account, but if you want the easiest way, I, I would recommend doing it the, uh, the YouTube premiere way. Okay. One question before you start. Please. If you, if you put it on YouTube, it's not, you gotta put it on the video. Like I made a video. Yes. And um, can, if I put it in YouTube, can I connect it to a slide? Um, I mean, you can record the slide and then put it in your final video, but when you upload it to YouTube, it's, it's not going to be interactive. It's just going to be, um, that video. Got it. Thank you. Welcome. Okay. So we're at YouTube. We're seeing all the weird videos that are being recommended to me. Um, so we want to upload this. So we click on this icon here and we're going to go to upload video. Okay. You're going to get this screen and then you're going to want to upload the file. So I have one on my desktop right here. Actually, I'm going to try this one right here. Okay. So I found the file. I put it here. Example, red video. Okay. So you can add your title. You can add a description, you know, maybe some uh, information regarding your school and then you can add a thumbnail. So, First, before you get an option to add a thumbnail, you need to verify your YouTube account. Uh, I see this option here because I've already verified it. Essentially, uh, to do that, you just need to associate a phone number uh, to your YouTube account. So I'm gonna upload a thumbnail. Uh, there's a really great website called Canva, uh, canva.com. Uh, what's nice about this is that there are templates that you can use to create nice YouTube title slides. So to give you an idea of what that looks like, um, I'm going to add one. So right here, graduation card, and I'll show everybody what that looks like. See, it looks like that. And so you can have, again, information regarding your school. So it's a nice sort of landing page, uh, as people wait for the video to premiere. And once again, that's Canva, C-A-N-V-A. Uh, you can sign up for free. So I added my thumbnail. You can add it to a playlist. Uh, right now I'm not going to, but Reese is going to, um, in a little bit, discuss the benefits of doing that through a playlist. So this is important. Who is the audience? Two options. Is it for kids or is it not? And so um, if it is made for kids, one of the main um, sort of differences is that it's not going to give you an option for the live chat. Okay, so I believe with the guidelines that the DOE put out, they want to make it as, you know, not as interactive as possible. So if you, again, if you want this to be the most uh, like easiest, like set it and forget it experience, you can select, yes, it's made for kids. And then as you can see, there's a built-in security um, uh, security features, uh, as in it won't recommend some weird videos once the video is done playing. Um, so you can hit yes. Or if you want to include that, uh, that live chat for a live element, you could hit no, it's not made for kids. And then you'll get an option to create a chat, okay? Now that can be tricky, but you can also have teachers be moderators, meaning if someone sends a chat, it doesn't get posted to the main chat. 
your teachers are moderating it and deciding whether that chat is allowed. That's more work for you, but if you want to include that, uh, by all means. So for this purpose, I'm just going to say yes, it's made for kids, and then the, the chat is not going to be on there. So I'm going to hit next. Okay. Uh, video elements. These things kind of annoy me when I watch uh, YouTube videos, like cards and stuff, so I, I'm not going to add any of that stuff. So here we go. If we scroll down, it's instead of save or publish, it says schedule. You want to click on schedule, and this is where you choose when your graduation is going to be. So let's say graduation is June 19th at, let's say, um, 12 p.m., okay? If you want to set a time zone, you know, to make sure that uh, everything is set, go ahead. So here we go. I added my school's information here when, it, uh, when it's going to premiere, and then I'm going to set as premiere, okay? What's nice about that is that um, a public, as you can see, a public watch page will, will be created. Okay, and then once you do that, you'll hit schedule. And then so your video is going to be processing and then um, your video is going to show up here. So it's nice about this. If you, um, if you click on the video, actually let me move to a, an actual video that I, that I scheduled. So if I click on this video, and uh, please excuse my son crying in the, in the background. So here, I uploaded this video last night to premiere today at 1230. So this is what it looks like. I have my title card here. It says when the premiere is going to begin. So before this begins, what you're doing is that you're taking this YouTube link. You can send it out to your school community to generate hype or, um, and Reese will talk about this also, you could choose to embed this YouTube video within your school website. So you just say, hey everyone, just go to our school website and just embed this video in the homepage and it just, it's just easier for everybody, okay? Um, it's 12.30, just to give folks an idea of what this looks like. I'm just gonna refresh it one more time. So, so once, once the time, once the time um, reaches, you're gonna get this two minute countdown. I'm sorry, did someone have a question? Hi, okay. yes, Santi. So we've just got a question come in saying sure. it was, um, some advice or guidance from the principal's hub about whether they should um, disable any commenting in the YouTube video. Yeah. I know it's something you're going to get onto because you can moderate and things, comments. Yeah. So uh, yes, in that principal's hub guidance, um, they are leaning toward complete security, which I, I absolutely, you know, like I, I see where they're coming from. So again, if you do not want this chat there, to go 100% in line with the recommendations of, um, of the DOE, then again, just set it as you're going through the, um, the uploading process, check that it's for kids, and then you're not gonna see this chat. So then it's just a very passive experience. And then what we're gonna get into, what Reese is gonna touch on is um, creating breakout rooms before and after, where you can you know, get hyped up, watch it together via you know, a, um, a different uh, breakout room, and then chat there. If you did- uh, oh, sorry, Constanti. Go ahead. Uh, another option would be to create a Google Classroom and invite all the graduates to that and have and use that as the back channel, but it would be in a secure place so they could use the stream during your show while the, while the uh, video is premiering, and then uh, afterwards you could use the Meet link and, and celebrate. Yeah, no, that's for example. That that's a that's an excellent uh, suggestion from Reese. Uh, once again. If you want to create um, a safe place to discuss the video and watch it together, you can create uh, a Google Classroom just dedicated to the gradua graduation, or maybe you have an existing Google Classroom already. Um, but I think that's a great way to do it. And there we go, the video is premiering. Uh, I had my friend Michelle uh, send me her graduation, so we're watching that right now. Okay, uh, and then folks can just watch this live. Um, in regards to the chat, if you right here at the top right, you see these three, these three uh, dots here, you can manage moderators. So when I click on that, it brings me to a new tab. And this is a, this is my profile from a different account. Okay. So you can add moderators on here. Uh, so how do you find a person's uh, YouTube page? Um, I'll show you. So let me just switch to a different uh, profile here. So first you need to sign into your Google account. And then you need to go to YouTube. 
and then you click on your icon here and then you want to go to your channel okay so i'm going to copy this so you would do this for every teacher who you want to be a comment moderator so i would copy that and then if i go back to this page i believe you just posted in right there you go and then you see the teacher show up and now these people can um can manage the comments if you decide to have comments uh so you would have that and then in general there's an option here for uh for comments oh yeah defaults if you go to defaults here we go um you can hide potentially inappropriate uh comments or here hold all comments for review i'd recommend that and then if you do that you would have uh, while your graduation is going on you would have those other teachers those other moderators on um monitoring those comments okay and there we go it's it's live people are watching it uh you can rewind it if you want um once it's done premiering it's going to be on your youtube page uh so that's essentially how you how you do that with um with youtube live one okay. one note about youtube live that i wanted to add there is that um if you're someone who waits the last minute uh like i can be sometimes you want you you need to uh allow 24 hours to activate activate your youtube studio account to go live so set that up at least you know a week in advance if you can uh to avoid that that moment yeah and and i would i would definitely just test out the whole process beforehand you know this again this is brand new territory for everyone so make sure that um if you can have the video edited you know before the graduation and then test out the premiere um once you get your youtube live account set uh, you can actually set a premiere to happen you know in the next hour the next half hour the next 15 minutes so you can test out how that works right so i think now i'm going to uh well, actually i'll i can i can pause if there's any like vital any important questions tracy do you see any any questions in the chat Hi Santi no there's not really there's just a couple of um bits i think you addressed but if we can just reiterate them sure. um can people once the video is premiered how would parents etc be able to watch it at a later date and can the actual live premiere be rewound or watched late if you see what i mean if i started 10 minutes after the live premiere would i jump yeah, in definitely. where you were or would I be able to start at the beginning? Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you for those questions. Um, so, yes, okay. So once the video is done premiering, it's going to live on that person or that school's YouTube channel. So you just find um, that YouTube channel and then you can watch it again. You can watch it as many times as you want. Uh, so that that's no problem. In regards to rewinding live uh, feed, yes, you can do that. So if I, I believe I still have the tab up, um so this is this is going live right now actually so this is live but you as you can see you can you can shuttle back and let's say you know you're in love with this countdown you want to watch us over again you can do that all right but uh you have the option of watching it live or rewinding it and uh let's say you got to the graduation late you can rewind it you can even rewind when your student gets called again when your kid gets called again so you have a a lot of options there a point about timing uh if if you if you are going to plan a breakout for afterwards um take into account that different people might hit pause rewind um you know watch something again so uh give them a little lag time in between when you schedule that after party uh based on your running time and give them a little buffer to take a break and then come back and join the celebration yeah no that that makes sense um, um yes and sorry one more question i think we just i'm not sure everybody knows that they have a youtube channel as part of their google education so well, someone's asking that or you want to reiterate i just think if you could just reiterate that every school has a youtube channel already definitely. yeah definitely know it thank you tracy so uh if you have a g suite for education account yes you do have access to youtube um you may need to enable it in the admin settings um i if you are using the um your at schools doe google account i'm not exactly sure how that's set up with youtube uh maybe someone can confirm but if you 
have your own separate uh, G Suite for Education domain uh, with your school, then yes, you can do everything that I'm that we're going over here right now. Uh, any other questions, Tracy? Before I hand it off to Reese. No, I think that's great. Thank okay, you. Thank you. All right, so uh, Reese is going to go ahead and um, uh, take over and discuss some playlist options. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen, and then um, Reese, if you want to go ahead. Reese, just as you jump in, I think there's one question you're going to be much better placed to answer than I am. I'm hoping it's not putting you on the stop on the spot. Um, we've got a question from Natasha saying if she wants to record students dancing virtually from a different platform like Zoom or Google Meet and then posting it to YouTube, how can that be done for best quality? I assume she's talking about the video editing and putting it all together. Yeah. Yeah, there's a couple different ways you can do that. I, I would suggest um, you can you can record the meeting using Google Meet the way um, that's set up, and you, you can Google that to find out how to do it, uh, if it's Zoom or Google Meet. So you can make that recording and save that file. Um, no matter how hard you try, I guess, and, and you're going to wind up with kids, if they're dancing or singing along, they're probably going to be a little out of sync due to different people's bandwidth and, and uh, lag times and things like that. So what I would do is to, if you, if you can uh, pick up one of those video editors that Santi mentioned, iMovie or, or WeVideo, um, you can record it using uh, Meet or Zoom, or you could use QuickTime Player on, on, um, on a Mac to get that file of the live recording, and then play the song in the background while, while everybody's dancing, and then put that video in iMovie, turn the volume down, and add the track that you recorded from to get the best audio quality. Um, and expect that some people won't look as in sync with the beat as, they, as you know that they, they would have been if it were live. I hope that answers the question. Yes. That, so that'd be how I'd approach that. Yes, thank you so much. All right. Um, so I want to show you guys how to do a playlist uh, in Vimeo or um, YouTube and then embed that uh, on your website, on your school website as an option. Um, that option would not allow, Vimeo and, and YouTube both have the ability to like videos as you're playing them uh, and comment. Um, in these options, we're opting to not do that through YouTube or Vimeo and have the back channel somewhere else or to do, and or to do pre uh, and post Google Meets or Zoom uh, parties to, to celebrate. Um, so, if you uh, if you're on YouTube, uh, so basically you're uploading a, 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 a series of videos that would have made up that longer hour-long ceremony. Um, in a lot of cases, people are going to be collecting them from different places. You've got maybe a student is going to record their um, valedictorian speech on an iPhone and send it to the person who's collecting everything. Um, the principal is going to make their opening remarks. Uh, the music teacher might be doing a mashup of, of kids singing, and so and so on. So, um, whoever's collecting that stuff, you could make either you could upload those to Vimeo or YouTube uh, piece by piece, and add it to what's called a playlist. In in YouTube, it's called a playlist, and in Vimeo, it's called a showcase. Um, and what that will do is play each video without someone having to click play more than once. They play at the beginning. And then when it reaches the end of, a, of one of your videos in the series, you'll get the little thumbnail in the bottom that will load the next video, and then it just pops up and starts playing. It's kind of like if, you, if you've ever been binged watch on uh, Netflix, the next episode will pop up at the bottom, and then eventually it will just start. Um, there, there won't be a countdown or anything like that for an option. It will just start. Um, you, there might be a little lag if someone has a slow Internet connection. Um, the reasons to do that, would be, um, again, not having to upload everything uh, all at once. And if, there's a, if anything goes wrong, it's easier to replace any one of those videos in a playlist than to uh, re-upload the whole thing in bulk. So, um, and like we mentioned before, Vimeo is less aggressive about copyrighted material. And I don't mean that to endorse uh, or to throw out a copyright law 
but there is uh, something called fair use for education. And if the benefit to the students that are collaborating on this video, uh, making critical choices about what music is included, uh, if, if the benefit to the students for that process outweighs the cost of the copyright owner, you can make a claim for fair use. Now, that doesn't mean that YouTube's not just going to flag it and take it down anyway, but Vimeo gives you a, a, a longer time, and I can't guarantee that, but I've never had one. I've only had one uh, strike from YouTube, I'm sorry, from <laughs> Vimeo for doing that, and, uh, and it took a long time after the video was published. Um, so on YouTube, you would uh, upload your videos, and like uh, Santi did before, you can, in this case, if you're doing a, a playlist of videos, you can set each video to premiere um, at the same time, or you could even stagger them if you wanted to get that granular, but I think releasing them all at the same time would be what I would do. Um, so once you upload your video, I'm in the studio, I, I'm showing all my videos, I can check the videos that I want to play in the playlist, and either add them to a playlist that already exists, or create the playlist if it hasn't if it doesn't exist yet. Um, from there, uh, it will take you to where you can sort the videos, so you can drag and drop them into order. Um, you can double check them this way. You can make sure that they're all premiering at the same time. Uh, and then you're going to share the playlist. So, in this case, you know you could take a playlist and send it to parents and have that be the watch link. Um, but in this case, I wanted to show you how to um, copy that link and embed it into a website. Um, so how that looks. Bear with me here. Okay. So if I wanted to replace this placeholder image, on this website with uh, the YouTube link. I'm just going to add another one here. This is uh, in WordPress. This can be done in, in any platform that you're going to use. Um, I can paste that code, and it's going to transfer it and turn it into a YouTube playlist. So I'll show you what that looks like on the website itself. So you can see there's two videos in the playlist. Um, and on the website, when someone clicks play, it should show that it's going to premiere in 19 days, um, and it does show that there there are two videos in that playlist that are both uh, to be launched, and that's going to work the same way that that Santi showed you before. In Vimeo, the way you make a playlist is similar. It's called a showcase, like I said before. So you can make a new showcase um, by clicking a couple videos. Oops, I clicked the showcase page. on the whole music. Okay. So you check, there we go. Check the videos you want to put in the playlist and then add to collections, uh, showcases, and choose your showcase. All right, and that's going to take you to a page where you can then uh, click to share. And same thing, you're going to get a link. Um, you can also choose embed code if, if that's what your particular web platform accepts. And I'll show you what uh, Vimeo playlist looks like. Okay, so in that ceremony, it's not, it doesn't always stand out, um, but you can click to see what videos are in the playlist. And as I play them, um, I'll show you what it looks like at the end of a single video. Congratulations. Okay, this is, uh, I should touch on this real quick. That's an example of uh, Google Slides to show the graduates with using Loom Screencast uh, soft uh, Google Chrome plugin or sorry extension to um, superimpose the teacher over it. That's my example. Obviously, this isn't ready ready for uh, publication. Um, but when you get to the end of that video, okay, and you can see the next video is going to load. So there's a little lag time depending on your uh, user's bandwidth. Let 
mine happens to be slow at the moment. Okay. Um, so that's basically the, the playlist. Um, there, there is a, a uh, Premiere option for um, Vimeo, but you would have to pay for the Pro account. And you could pay for it for one month for $75 if you wanted to use the live features. But uh, as I'm going to show you, uh, there's a workaround for that if you're going to publish things into your website. So um, that's the route that a few schools that I'm working with are going to take, and I'll show you what that looks like. So um, the, the basics are that you would create a page on your website called um, your school, you know, your, your URL slash 2020 or slash graduation 2020. And then you're going to copy and paste the embed code in, like I showed you before. Um, and then put the details around that. So you can control the environment um, of what that's going to look like. So we, in this case, we have the event program at the top that lets people know that they can join the Google Classroom live meet pre and post ceremony. Um, and that if there's any confusion, they should go down below and press play at the allotted time. So any time after that um, time that it's, that it's set to play, they can come and watch it, and, you, and they won't, there won't be any restrictions. Um, the way that you can sort of fake the live release in, in um, using Vimeo would be to, and let me get rid of this, would be to have a placeholder image that's there until a few minutes before the, the videos are supposed to go live, and then replace that with uh, the, the playlist from Vimeo or YouTube. So, you know, that's, that's the risk if, if, if uh, something goes terribly wrong for one person, you might have a couple people uh, lined up who know how to do this, but you're just uh, taking off uh, one piece from your, from your um, website and adding another. I saw the YouTube link there. Okay. Um, so with that, and then we also put the um, ceremony contents down below. So if, they, if they're wondering what they're watching or what's coming next, or if there's something coming next, hopefully this helps them uh, stay on track. So I'll, I'll end it there and, take, uh, and we can start having the discussion and questions about all this because I know we've, we've, we've been a mouthful. Okay. Uh, thanks, Reese. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, we might end a little early. I'm sure people have no problems with that. But um, so we just went over again how to conduct a virtual graduation using YouTube Live, Premieres, um, Google Meet, uh, Vimeo, YouTube Playlists. Um, so if anyone else has any questions, um, feel free to either post them in the chat or if you want to ask them straight out, uh, me and Reese will, hear, will be here to help uh, take any questions maybe you show something video ceremony graduation and then what? we can see maybe, about 15 minutes maybe it's interesting i'm from okay. russia i saw a lot of graduation i'm from high school okay you so know? uh you want to see like, an example graduation video yes of course it's michelle obama you showed before I, Maybe I should, you it, show yeah. somebody. <laughs> we enjoy, you know. Um, because... Reese, you you have like uh, some some pre-made uh, graduation videos, right? Do you? Uh, no, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm asking... You tried to show, but I didn't see. You know, see, for me, I computer see. it's a news in America. You know, but. Uh, if okay. I come to this session, maybe you show everything. Okay. Technique, you know, you explain technique everybody, but uh, now better to enjoy, to see, you know. Well, uh, let's see. Reese, do you have any? Do you have any uh, examples? Yes. I, I would like to show that District uh, 8. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's a lot like a graduation, and it, it was using live stream. Okay. Um, let me find that link just while we, okay. if we have another question, I can, I can find that link and uh, pull it up. I think one of the questions, Reese, that's coming in in general seems to be about 
what do we do? These are all great ideas, but what can we do if we need help? You know, once we start building these videos and putting them together, um, you guys make it look so easy. What could we do to reach out? And Lisa's put in that there's a great Teams group um, and I, they can reach out to you guys. They can reach out to Santi, Reese. is that true? So I'm, yes. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm able to support schools if you need help with the video editing. Uh, Reese, you're, um, I would assume you're, you're able also? Yes. And um, yeah, we, I mean, for simple questions, you can, you can email or, or, or put it in that Teams and, and that way we, you know, your, our answers go to as many people as possible. Yeah. But, um, Mr. Donik, we don't hear you. Santi, we hear very nice, but Donik, not a problem with the... Okay, so, uh, so what Reese was saying, uh, feel free to reach out to that Microsoft Teams chat that was posted in, in this particular chat. Um, there's a chat dedicated to virtual graduations, and uh, you, um, th there will be people who will offer help that way. Uh, again, I, I'm able to offer services to help edit the video if you need that. Uh, Reese, uh, feel free to send him a message too. We're gonna put our email addresses in the chat, but uh, there are companies out there that can help you if you need support uh, in the aspect of editing and, uh, and this whole process. No, it's okay. I, I'm putting um, the Kindness Awards live stream video um, into, the, into the chat now uh, from District 8. And that looks a lot like uh, what I think a lot of these virtual graduation ceremonies will look like. They used YouTube Live, they had a countdown, and um, you see an address from the superintendent, and then uh, different administrators pop on, uh, and it was pre-recorded and mashed together uh, into one long video. Um, so you can, you can watch how the countdown works on there because they actually recorded that. Um, and uh, it, worked, it worked really well. So as, uh, as Reese is uh, sharing that, I just want to reiterate that uh, this session is being recorded and we will share it. Okay, so Reese just posted, um, if you're interested in watching an example graduation style video, video Reese just posted a link in the chat. Uh, and again, this session is being recorded. Uh, I will send it, uh, it out to uh, the folks here. Um, Lisa's posting some other great uh, graduation video uh, examples, but um, we will be sending this session out, uh, this recorded session. No, it's up to you. If you don't want or you don't have a chance, it's uh, okay. I have computer, I saw a lot of ceremony, but I decided that you show me too, you know. Uh, you know, it's up to you. Yeah. So yes, there's a lot of people, right? Enjoy. Very nice. Thank you. Yeah. Definitely. I have a comment, a question. Sure. So my school decided that for because we have kindergarten, I'm doing kindergarten, we decided to do little. Um, individual um, presentations for our class instead of doing it as a whole because they're not leaving the building they're going to first grade so my question to you is um, would it be best just to use meets to instead of doing all this you know like I see the presentation you guys have with um, the superintendent and like I mean I don't know so, so tell me more. So, so you said it's a graduation from kindergarten to first grade, right? Yeah. And, and you want to make a video for just one kid or for each? No, not for one class. Like I'm doing my graduation ceremony. And, like everybody decided that we'll do it individually. Oh, I got Instead of doing it as a whole, yeah. right? Because we're, some of the teachers, such as myself, are not too computer savvy yeah. in regards to making, you know, a, a big spectacle so um we decided to do it little so i made a slideshow to help out and um i'm having an issue with like if, with the slide with google slide should i present it or should i like I, i'm like i see the outline that you guys yeah. put out um, so you, some you, of that you, stuff you, i won't use sure too much. but you, um, you, have, you have some options if you have a, a slideshow that you made 
and you want to share it with, let's say, the parents of the students in your kindergarten, mm -hmm. um, you could have your the parents log in to their students' Google account and have everyone on a Google Meet. And then you as a presenter, you could present that Google slide and then everyone's watching the slide at the same time. But I'm, I'm having technical difficulty with adding a video. I created a video with all the pictures from previous events before the crisis. And okay. I, I put it all together and I made a six minute video and I, I did it on my iPhone photo and sent it to my drive and it would not play on the damn drive. So I'm wondering what are my other options of making this little video yeah. into yeah. maybe a face of a, a, a YouTube video and then adding the link. I, I would recommend the YouTube video. So if you made it on your phone or on a, another device, I don't know my, how long my old was. Mac, ten year old old Mac. <laughs> God bless. So so that video that video might be uh, large. I don't know what the file size is, and large videos have a hard time playing. Um, like through Google Drive. So I would recommend uploading it to YouTube. You could upload it as an unlisted video. So it's like semi-private. The only people who could watch it are people who have that link. But I would recommend putting it uh, in, in YouTube. Uh, Reese, what do you say, man? Yeah, same. I, I would uh, upload it to Vimeo or YouTube. They, they play back uh, better than, than a, a file in Google Drive. Uh, yeah, because it will uh, compress the video. Um, you could also try yeah, no, I, that, that's what I would. That's what I would do, and I would send the link to the folks through Google Classroom or however else you're um, contacting them and, and connected to them. Yeah. Thank you so much, because I'm like totally. Thank you, no, right but now. Right. Yeah. Um, let's <laughs> let's. Microphone problem. Okay. Does it, Does anyone have a, other other questions at all? So I see on here, using music for graduation is free use education on. Uh, well, uh, in, it's, in, again, we touched on um, copy, copyright and music at the beginning of the session. Um, if you want to be safe, we recommend not using copyright music in your video, just because, again, like we don't think you're going to get sued, especially for you know, public school graduation. We're more worried about the YouTube artificial intelligence um, automatically scanning your video when you upload it. And then even if there's like 20 seconds of the song, it might flag your video and it might prevent you from playing it. So to, to, be, to be super safe, we recommend not using any music that has any copyright associated with it. Um, in our agenda, in the slide, we linked uh, a YouTube music page that has a bunch of royalty-free music that you can check out. So I, I, would, uh, I would send that. Yes, we, we will be sending everyone the recording of this session. Um, Again, please sign the attendance form that I posted on here. Um, Tracy, if you have a minute, please post it one more time. Um, I know some folks have to leave for different meetings. Thank you for coming. Uh, we really appreciate your support. Good luck with everything. Again, if you need help with the editing. Um, hello. Uh, yeah, feel free to reach out to um, myself. I'm going to put my, my email in the chat. Reese, you want to put your email in the chat? Um, mm -hmm. Where did you say we can get the list for royalty-free music? I will I'll drop that in there right after I put my email address. Um, Thank you. Org. You're very welcome. Um, it's also in the Google Slides, which are linked from the agenda. Thank you. I've just dropped into the chat. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Um, And then um, there, there's the link. Um, if you Google YouTube royalty free music, it'll pop up again, as Tracy mentioned, it's in the chat. There it is. Okay. Um, yes, I will put a link of the recording in the agenda. Actually, at the bottom of the agenda is a recording of the same session that I did last week. So if you want to watch it twice, compare the, the jokes that were made, that's um, by all means. Okay. Uh, I, I saw a question in there about recording over PowerPoint. Okay. And making that video so that would be um, I would suggest using a screen recording software like um, Screencastify or Loom or uh, QuickTime Player um, Screencast-O-Matic is another one if you if you there are uh, a lot of PDs on the on the NYC DOE PD sessions uh, on those particular different types of software but screencasting um, would record the screen. You could embed yourself in that presentation uh, if you wanted the kids to see you. 
Uh, you can toggle your cell phone and off if you wanted to, and, um, and then share that recording either through YouTube, Vimeo, Google Drive, et cetera. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so, uh, real quick also, uh, if anyone is in need of CTLE hours, uh, again, in the agenda, there's a link to fill out a form where you get a CTLE hours. Yeah. Uh, th th this can be one, one and a half hours if you're interested. Again, that's in the agenda at the bottom uh, with the other resources. I know uh, folks need some uh, some hours, so we're, we're, we're here to provide that. Any, any other questions at all? Can you send that to us now? So I, I ha it, it's automatic actually. So I can post a link to the uh, CTLE. Yes, oh. post the link, that would be great. Sure, because then once you fill it out, you'll get an email from me with your form. Um, so I'm gonna paste it in the link right now or paste it in the chat right now. Uh, so there I it is. Yeah. Are yeah, we I'm getting there. a recording of this um, video? Uh, definitely, so again, if you uh, sign the attendance form, I have your email address. Once this is done recording, we're gonna upload it to YouTube and then I'll email, I'll email everyone um, who did the attendance. I'll also post it in the um, NYC Schools Tech Facebook group. All right, um, I'll probably type it out, send it out through some messenger pigeons, but uh, we'll send it out uh, a nu numerous amount of ways. Yeah, and just to, right, um, in case you missed it while we were showing our screens live, some of the directions are, are posted in the um, Google Slides. So that if you wanted to go reference those and uh, see some of the fine points of how to do things, you can look there and then follow up with us to, uh, with any questions. So, um, so again, thank you all for coming. Thank you for your support. Um, if you need to head to a different meeting, feel free to exit the chat. If anybody has any more questions, we'll hang around for a, a few more minutes. I have a question. I'm sorry, I have only a laptop, not a telephone. How could I register myself? Uh, register for, for what now? Yeah, yeah, because I look, I told you I have only a laptop and uh, I have no this uh, mobile. You know my name, Tamara Hailenka, you see? Um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I don't know. Uh, understand the question are you trying to get to uh, a specific link or a video oh no, because uh, how could that be registered because this must be link right oh, oh. okay thank you okay yeah, maybe i i write here okay um people are um, saying thank you you're very welcome oh go ahead yes jo joanne i think you said you had a question yes um i asked it earlier um if my, my school is doing a program and we're gonna insert it inside. You're saying that we only could put the child's first and last name. We can't put the full name. Is that correct? Um, yeah, with- Go ahead, Reese. With the Children's Online Protection Act and the, and the um, federal uh, guidelines on that, you, you, you're not supposed to post uh, personally identifying information on kids online. So that typically means uh, a photo of the kid with their first and last name or address or anything like that. So oh, thank you. Uh, That's what we was doing. Yes. We would the routine been has been All first right. name, last initial, or first name only. Okay, thank you. Very welcome. Thank you. So uh, we're allowed. I'm sorry. So we're allowed to post their picture with their first name only. Correct. Correct. It's you know I'm not a, I'm not a lawyer, but as far as we've uh, looked over the years for a, a really specific guidelines on that, the best answer I've seen is some place, some lawyers saying first name, picture is good. Some say last initial, some say leave, the, leave it off altogether. Um, so if you want to be safe, first name and image has, has been the norm for a long time. And um, any, any, any time I've asked for legal guidance on that, that's, that's been okay understandable thank you so much for all your information so when you say signing up just by us coming in here you have our information on our on our attendance correct well um yes and no so when when you sign in you had to uh, input your uh, at schools credentials yes uh, actually i don't have access to wherever that's going um so i did post another link for the attendance just for for my um my records or uh, tracy just posted again it's a google oh, okay. form. So, the Google, I see it, I see it. So yeah, just click that link. Please, please. It takes a minute. And like the main reason, just so I know who to send the recording to. Oh, what's, fabulous. What's the, what's the name of this class again? 
Oh, you can just say virtual graduation. Virtual, virtual graduation. Grad. Thank you. And um, if you can put like 1.5 for the, uh, the duration. Uh, oh, there's no option. Excuse me. There's no option when you fill out the form for one and a half. It's one, two, or other. I think oh, okay. So I then didn't do the one point four. What I do is I just put two. And... <laughs> hey. Okay. Uh, All right. I'm. I'm. I'm not. I'm not mad at it. You can put one. You can put two. Okay. Um. Next question. Uh, Reese, sorry. There's is, a reiteration sorry. about the YouTube uh, student full name. So even on YouTube, if we don't post it private, uh, if we don't post it publicly. Can we still not share the students' full name, their first and last name, is the question. Yeah, that's a tough call. I would still, I would still err on the side of only Reece, showing Reece, the first name. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to mute everyone real quick and then just unmute yourselves. Yeah, I was saying that, that's a tough call. Um, and I would still err on the side of, of only putting the first name uh, in, in case someone winds up with the link, um, and it's, it's hard to, you know, you can, you can post links to videos with a password on it that you give out, but it's still taking a risk to put that together and put it out there. I don't know if it, in the letter of the law, if it's only shared with certain people, but you know, as far as if you read, um, if you read the, the guidelines, it's going to say online which doesn't necessarily, it doesn't specify whether it's privately online with a small group or, or, or open on the internet. So I would err on the side of only putting the first name. And then uh, real quick with that CTLE form, um, I know it's asked for location, you can just say virtual. And for everyone who's coming up with the questions, even if you have consent, et cetera, what Reese and Santi I think is saying is it's better to be safe than sorry. Yeah, yes. And Santi, can you put up the, the form again, the CTL form? I'll do that, yeah. Teresa. Okay, thank, oh, you. thank you so much. So just be safe, better to be safe than sorry. That's what we're saying. So be cautious, err on the side of caution. And you're gonna send it now. Yes, Teresa, it's, give me one sec. And I, I know. There you go. You <laughs> click on my fingers. Where is it? Let's see. Okay. Okay. So um, I'll give it another minute, and then uh, we'll we'll sign off. So um, if anybody has any more pressing questions, uh, feel free to ask them, and then we'll answer them. Um, otherwise, thank you for joining. It's not Friday yet, but we're almost there. Happy Happy Friday, Junior. Um, special thanks to uh, Reese and Tracy for helping out. Uh, feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions. But uh, thank you. Have, have a great graduation. I look forward to seeing um, links and, and, and people sharing them. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. Uh, Reece, thank you. So helpful. Thank you so much. Any, any final words uh, to my co host there? Uh, sorry, Johnny apparently has one more important question. I don't know what the question <laughs> is, but is, is my background the office? Uh, yes, <laughs> yes, it is. Any any office fans here? <laughs> it's either the yeah, office. That's or fabulous. Or you just see like my bedroom back there, which is. <laughs> so, okay. Um, so I, I have a quick question. Yes. Um, if if you protect the child's privacy with only putting their first name and their picture, can the parents still um, sort of like how how far can a parent take it with if if they were not in agreement with that or they were not comfortable after they saw the video or after they saw the graduation? How far can a parent take it using the using COPA, can they come back to the school and say, oh, I wasn't in agreement with this, and could they sue? And that's why I am going to speak to my principal so we can have them re-sign the media release, because I'm yes. already there. We did the same already. We already had them their permission. Cool. So yeah, you definitely- so Our children happen to be very, very, very handicapped also, so for all different reasons, we asked them their, their opinion first. 
and then we had them sign something. Oh, thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you for sharing that. Um, what is that? I'm sorry, but what is that? Like, like, I said, like I said, how far can they take it? And what should you put on a new release form for this? Because this can end up anywhere. And the parents, when it's live, they can download it and do whatever they want. And also, whoever has the link to this as well, correct? Yeah. yeah I would on, on Go ahead, some please. platforms, on, on YouTube, you can limit where it can be embedded. Um, you, can, you can hide the link from... Did I say YouTube? I meant Vimeo. Um, you can hide the link from Vimeo, and I believe you can do this stuff on YouTube too. I just haven't been using it as, as often. Um, but uh, sorry, uh, you can um, you can hide the link, and then you can uh, limit. You can say nobody can download it, and you can also say it can only be embedded on certain sites. So that if you wanted to protect it, you could put it on a hidden page of your website only send that link to parents and not allow the video to be visible to the general YouTube audience and Vimeo audience. And you can tell, if you have that down, you can tell the parents in a, uh, in a letter that goes home with the, con with the uh, consent form that this is what you're going to be doing, this is how it's going to be protected, and, um, and even if you want to go as far, if you have it together, you can say what exactly you're going to be sharing you know, their school photo and uh, images from the classroom. Yeah, uh, I, I know another uh, suggestion that uh, Lisa Nielsen had, if you are concerned about privacy and like images of students, you can, um, you can have avatars, maybe students can draw a picture of themselves or maybe you can use like an emoji or something. Um, so like that, there, there are other ways to, to go about that also. Because my school is planning to do an implied consent where if the parents don't say that there's, they don't want their child participating in graduation, they're going to go ahead and go for it. But I was trying to stop them into not doing it that way. They should have full consent, correct? Um, that's, that's, that's tricky. I can help answer that, Santi. Thank you, Lisa. Um, our office, the AIT, as Yupis knows, because she works with us all the time, we are working with legal to get guidance out on media consent. Um, and I, it's, ideally, it would be out already, but it looks like by next week, we should be able to have some guidance. I mean, the very best thing is to just get the regular media consent, but that is not so easy in these times. So one of the options we are looking at is an opt out, um, but we are also looking at some digital media consent options. So hopefully by next week, this will be a little more clear. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah. Oh, fabulous. I use the regular media consent one. That's the one that we email to the parent. Oh, that's If you're crazy. able to do that, that's like you're good to go, but that's yeah. very difficult for some schools to get it to happen. So we're trying to come up with uh, something that if schools couldn't do that, something else that they might be able to do that's more feasible. Very nice, very nice. Thank you, thank you so much for all that. Another answer. quick question. How many, do we get two hours CTL or one hour? Um, or one and a half, I don't know. It says the if, AX. If, if you can't do one and a half, uh, let, let's round up. Let, let's say two hours, all right? Thank you. <laughs> um, Okay, Thank so I, I, I think you're very welcome. I think that's that's most of the questions. Um, so let's, sh sh shall we sign off? Let's let's sign off. Yes, thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thanks everyone. Be well, everyone. Be well, everyone.